Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into the fascinating world of neuroplasticity with The Brain That Changes Itself by Norman Doidge. Once believed to be fixed and immutable, the human brain is revealed through Doidge's compelling narrative as a malleable and constantly evolving organ, capable of remarkable changes through thought and behavior alone. Through a series of real life stories, from stroke victims relearning basic movements to overcoming learning disabilities. Deutsch demonstrates the brain's astonishing ability to rewire itself and compensate for damage. This book is not just an exploration of scientific discovery. It is a chronicle of hope and the untapped potential within all of us. Written by psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, and researcher Norman Deutsch, affiliated with both Columbia University and the University of Toronto, this New York Times bestseller has gained widespread acclaim. His work has graced prestigious publications and media outlets, and he regularly brings his insights to a broader audience through television and radio appearances. The Brain That Changes Itself is an essential read for anyone looking to alter deep-seated habits, psychology enthusiasts eager to learn about the cutting edge of brain science, or those seeking motivation during recovery from injury. Embark on a journey that will transform your understanding of the human mind and its endless capacity for change. Join us for a synopsis that promises to be as enlightening as it is empowering, perfect for anyone intrigued by the resilience and adaptability of our brains. The Brain That Changes Itself Stories of Personal Triumph from the Frontiers of Brain Science Introduction Welcome to a journey through your mind's amazing capacity for change. Imagine this. You're the proud owner of the most advanced, adaptable supercomputer on Earth. Your very own brain. It's a marvel of nature's engineering, with the power to rewire, strengthen, and evolve its abilities. What if I tell you that your brain has the potential, much like a phoenix, to rise anew from adversity, to transform through experience, and to enhance your physical existence merely through thought? This narrative isn't a work of science fiction. It's the reality of neuroplasticity, the astonishing ability of your brain to change itself. As we delve into this fascinating territory, we'll explore the brain's profound elasticity you'll learn that what appeared to be set limits are merely starting points for potential growth. Today's exploration uncovers the malleability of our desires as we're not fixed with the sexual drive we're born with, the power of thought in addressing and potentially solving our issues, and the promising possibility that through active thinking we might have a fighting chance against cognitive disorders like dementia. Ready to get to know the regenerative superpowers of your brain? Let's dive in. Harness the transformative power of your gray matter. Have you ever felt constrained by a trait or an ability? Believing it was hardwired from birth? It's time to shake off that notion. The brain's capacity for neuroplasticity means that nothing is truly set in stone. Your cognitive landscape can alter itself to adapt and overcome new challenges akin to a stream carving out varied pathways through a rock, always finding a new route in response to obstacles. From tweaking our sexual proclivities to reconfiguring neural connections to compensate for damaged areas, your cerebral terrain is in a constant state of flux. This inherent flexibility is pivotal for our growth, ensuring that we're not static beings, but dynamic creatures ever evolving in response to life's vast array of demands. Thinking, the catalyst for transformation. What if thinking could be prescribed like medicine? This isn't a mere fantasy. It's another aspect of neuroplasticity. Our thoughts can shape our brain's architecture in much the same way an architect dreams up a building and then brings it to life. The belief that you can vanquish a problem by thinking it away isn't just wishful thinking. It has a basis in our physical reality. For instance, in learning new skills or in therapy, the brain adapts to our thought patterns. 
reinforcing or constructing pathways that can quite literally change our minds. By consciously directing our thoughts, we command the malleable putty of our brains to form new connections, enabling us to overcome and resolve both physical and psychological hurdles. Charting a course for a brighter future. Imagine if our understanding of the brain's plasticity could unlock a future where dementia and similar disorders are merely old adversaries we've learned to thwart. Through active, engaged thinking, there's potential to not only keep our minds sharp, but to fortify them against the decline often associated with aging. Our thoughts have power, and by cultivating them with intent, we're doing more than pondering. We're bodybuilding for the brain. The implications are as hopeful as they are practical. As we continue to understand and employ our brain's capacity to morph and mend, we are potentially scripting a new chapter in the human saga, one where cognitive decline is not an inevitable end, but a challenge we are equipped to face with confidence. This journey through your brain's regenerative powers showcases the full spectrum of your cerebral potential. It offers not just a glimpse, but a clear view into the bright possibilities that lie in the untapped corners of our minds. The key takeaway is understanding that you are not just a passenger in the voyage of your brain's evolution, you are its navigator, steering towards uncharted horizons with every thought you entertain. So think boldly, for in your thoughts lies the power to change your brain, and with it, your very being. Part 1. Unlocking the brain's hidden pathways with unmasking. The idea that the adult brain is a static, unchangeable entity has been debunked by the inspiring revelations of neuroplasticity. This concept, the brain's impressive capability to reconfigure itself, turns out to be one of the most exhilarating discoveries in neuroscience. Picture the brain as a living, breathing sculptor, constantly chiseling away at itself, adding here, smoothing there, in an endless dance of neural transformation. At the heart of this cerebral flexibility is a phenomenon known as unmasking. When existing neural pathways are silenced, others, previously dormant pathways, reveal themselves ready to take on new roles. As these secondary pathways are engaged repeatedly, they gain strength and functionality, akin to muscles that bulk up with exercise. Take Cheryl Schiltz's story as an illustrative chapter in the compelling narrative of neuroplasticity. For half a decade, Schiltz was deprived of her sense of balance due to extensive damage to her vestibular system within her brain. That was until neuroplasticity pioneer Paul Bakirita intervened with a groundbreaking piece of technology, an accelerometer. This device worked magic by transmitting signals to a plastic strip dotted with electrodes, which was then placed on Schiltz's tongue. The tongue, an organ with a dense array of neural connections, became a detour for the sensations typically headed straight for the sensory cortex. Instead, the signals were rerouted to the brain's balance processing precincts. With persistence and practice, the marvelous mechanisms of neuroplasticity emerged. Schiltz's brain blazed new trails, unmasking and reinforcing alternate neural paths. Over time, Schiltz achieved what once seemed impossible. She began to find her balance independently, evidence of her brain's adaptation and newfound resilience. Thus, in the ever-changing landscape of the mind, unmasking acts as a beacon of hope, illustrating the untold potential for healing and enhancement nestled within our cranial confines. As the brain unveils its hidden roots, it promises not just recovery, but the dawn of abilities previously unimagined. Part 2. Brain Power Boosted. How stimulating your mind can sculpt your brain. In the realm of the brain, enrichment is akin to a master key that can unlock vast potential. Forget the need for high-tech inventions. The tools required to shape the brain are often as simple as engaging in a rich variety of stimulating activities. As we work out our mental muscles, our brain structure can become more complex and capable. Pioneering studies by researcher Mark Rosenzweig at the University of California, Berkeley, paved the way with his work on rats. 
his discoveries were nothing short of a scientific coup d'etat against the old guard of inflexible brain dogma. The rodents that were raised in environments brimming with stimuli showed significant physical improvements in their neural landscape. More neurotransmitters, heavier brain regions, and increased blood flow compared to their peers in more mundane settings. In the human sphere, Barbara Arrowsmith Young's saga stands as a testament to the transformative power of a nutrient-rich mental diet. Though gifted with extraordinary auditory and visual memory, Young grappled with linguistic and logical challenges that tethered her understanding to the ground. Daily tasks, such as deciphering the time from a clock or following a conversation, were steep mountains to climb. However, Young's discovery of the brain's adaptability spurred her to design a regimen of mental gymnastics. Her exercise with clock face cards was more than just a drill. It was a relentless pursuit of rewiring her brain. The cards, depicting various times, could not be learned by rote, which compelled her to engage deeply with the task at hand. For Young, every incorrect guess was not a setback, but a stepping stone. Hours spent with an actual clock to dissect her errors were grueling, yet fruitful. The result was an astonishing metamorphosis. Like an alchemist turning lead into gold, Young transformed her cognitive deficits into strengths, ultimately decoding clocks with an ease that outpaced the norm. Young's story serves as a compelling illustration that with thoughtful, targeted mental activity, we can reshape our brains. It's a message filled with hope. Through deliberate mental exercise, each of us holds the chisel to sculpt our neural architecture and carve out newfound abilities. Part 3. Body changes lead to brain adaptations. The marvel of brain maps. In the intricate dance between our bodies and brains, it's a profound truth that both are constantly influencing and reshaping one another. The concept of brain plasticity further confirms this mesmerizing interplay. As noted by the groundbreaking work of Michael Merzenich, a leading brain scientist with a focus on brain maps. Brain maps are akin to the control panels or intricate circuit diagrams of our brains, outlining the specific regions responsible for governing the body's myriad parts and functions. It's these maps that allow us to understand how our brains process movement and sensory input. The roots of brain map knowledge trace back to the 1930s, thanks to Dr. Wilder Penfield's pioneering efforts. Penfield illuminated how adjoining areas of the body are mirrored by neighboring segments on the brain map. This adjacency sometimes results in surprising connections. For instance, it may well explain why a phenomena like foot fetishes exist as the brain regions for feet and genitalia are in close proximity. Yet, these brain maps are not static territories. Merzenich's research reveals how they shift and recalibrate over our lifetimes, influenced by our activities, experiences, and even injuries. When confronted with abnormal input, or when nerve functions are compromised, brain maps demonstrate a remarkable adaptability, reallocating their real estate to maximize efficiency and capability. Mirzanich, together with John Cass, established this principle through an experiment involving monkeys. After severing the median nerve in a monkey's arm, they observed that the brain map area associated with this nerve went silent upon touching the normally corresponding hand part. Intriguingly, when another part of the hand was stimulated, it activated the median nerve's map, which had nearly doubled in response, absorbing the territory of its fallen comrade. This expansion and reallocation of neural territories highlighted a key insight. The adult brain's malleability is not only real, but it's also remarkably resilient. Like a masterful artist adjusting their technique in response to a changing canvas, our brains modify their maps to ensure seamless orchestration of our physical form. This plasticity is a testament to our brain's enduring adaptiveness and its enduring quest to maintain harmony and function throughout our lives. Part 4. Understanding the Neuroplasticity of Desire As we continue to uncover the wonders of neuroplasticity, let's turn to an even more intimate aspect of human experience, our sexuality. Far from being a fixed drive, 
our libido is surprisingly malleable and can be shaped significantly by our psychological experiences and past sexual encounters. Within the folds of our brains lie regions like the hypothalamus and the amygdala. The hypothalamus orchestrates our basic drives, including hunger and sexuality, while the amygdala is the crucible for our emotions. Both these areas boast a high degree of plasticity, and thus our sexual proclivities can evolve over time. Our sexual tastes often take root during critical periods of childhood, becoming etched into our neural circuits. These foundational moments can direct the trajectory of our romantic and sexual attraction well into adulthood. That's why individuals might find themselves drawn to partners who reflect the emotional contours of their early caregivers, whether cold, nurturing, or distant. Yet, the narrative doesn't end there. The brain's plastic nature ensures that our sexual predilections are not immutable. They are, in fact, open to reconstruction throughout our lives. Modern pornography is a potent example of how various undercurrents of latent sexuality can be awakened and reinforced. The diverse tableau of preferences and images on offer raises the curtain on neural networks that were formed during those critical periods. Through regular consumption, combined with the dopamine-driven pleasure derived from viewing, new neural pathways can be laid down or existing ones can be strengthened, reshaping the architecture of sexual desire. As consumption continues, tolerance may develop, a process reminiscent of how substance tolerance builds. Thus, if gratification is entwined with aggressive themes, the pleasure-reward cycle might necessitate the intensification of these themes for the same level of satisfaction. This mechanism may partly explain why there's been a surge in the popularity of sadomasochistic elements in today's adult content. This nuanced understanding of sexual plasticity highlights the extent to which experiences, particularly those tied to profound pleasure or emotion, can transform our brains. It's an insight that opens up conversations about the impact of our choices and experiences on our deepest desires and underscores the substantial, albeit subtle, power we hold over the wiring of our most instinctual drives. Part 5. Transformation through Neurorehabilitation. The Promise of Brain Exercises. In our exploration of the brain's adaptability, we encounter compelling narratives of individuals like Dr. Bernstein, an eye surgeon who found hope and healing using the principles of neuroplasticity. After suffering a stroke that rendered his left hand nearly useless, Bernstein turned to a revolutionary therapy which would not only challenge his physical limitations, but also redefine his neural landscape. This therapeutic approach, known as constraint-induced CI movement therapy, was pioneered by Edward Taub. Bernstein, initially unable to perform basic tasks like lifting a spoon or buttoning a shirt, embarked on a regimen of repetitive, deliberate exercises. These mundane yet focused activities, wiping tables, cleaning windows, acted as the agent of change, rewiring his brain and restoring function. The payoff was profound. From writing to playing tennis, Bernstein's dedication to therapy rewrote his story from disability to capability. The origins of CI therapy trace back to Taub's work with monkeys which revealed an astonishing truth, that unused limbs didn't cease to function due to physical incapacity, but rather because they hadn't learned to operate in their altered state. However, when only a single limb lost sensory input, the creatures would abandon its use, similar to how humans typically respond. Such reactions stemmed from what's known as spinal shock, an immediate post-injury phase where neurons struggle to fire, leading to what Taub coined learned non-use. Taub hypothesized that though stroke patients exhibited paralysis, the blueprint for movement might still exist within their nervous system. By restricting the use of their functioning limb, he encouraged patients to mobilize the affected one. This retraining proved successful, unlocking dormant pathways and fostering new ones. Alongside CI therapy is the powerful tool of shaping, which fine-tunes behavior incrementally, instead of waiting until a task's completion for reward. Shaping celebrates every small step towards the goal. Such acknowledgement sparks a flame of motivation, 
propelling patients forward. The combination of daily practice, focused on a specific skill set, and the technique of massed practice, packing exercise into tight timeframes, has emerged as a highly effective recipe for neurorehabilitation. From these stories and practices, it's clear that the brain's plasticity isn't merely an abstract concept. It's a gateway to transformation. As we learn to harness these methods, shaping behavior and rerouting neural circuits become tangible realities, offering renewed autonomy and mastery over our own movements and, by extension, our lives. Part 6. Mapping the Mind. Pioneering Treatments for OCD with Neuroplasticity. Anxiety and Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, OCD, offer fertile grounds to understand the brain's remarkable capacity for change and regeneration. For individuals grappling with these conditions, their concerns escalate not just to a worry, but a relentless siege of distress. Yet, within the brain's malleable nature lies a glimmer of hope for reprieve and recovery. Cutting-edge brain scans open a window into the neural underpinnings of OCD, trailblazed by the insights of UCLA psychiatrist Jeffrey M. Schwartz, where most of us experience a temporary spike in unease upon recognizing an error, leading us to resolve it and subsequently relax, this process derails for those with OCD. The necessary neurological off-switch for worry, usually provided by the caudate nucleus, malfunctions and the anxiety stubbornly persists. Armed with a clearer picture of the OCD brain, neuroplasticity paves the way for innovative, effective treatments. One remarkable strategy hinges on the brain's ability to carve new pathways and its inherent competitive nature. By engaging in alternative, absorbing activities, from altruism to artistry, patients can voluntarily trigger their caudate nucleus, diverting attention and diffusing the relentless cycle of worry. For instance, a patient might find solace in the social engagement of assisting another, or lose themselves in the harmonious escape of playing a musical instrument. Even in solitude, the mere act of listening to an audiobook can provide an essential mental detour during a moment of obsessive distress. As patients immerse themselves in these new activities, they quite literally chart new territories in their brains. This venture cultivates a fledgling, pleasure-centric neural circuit, one that rewards and strengthens with each engagement. Over time, this burgeoning path jostles against the entrenched, worry-worn circuit of OCD. By favoring the new path and persistently treading it, patients help ensure that the healthier, more robust circuit prevails. Herein lies the empowering narrative of neuroplasticity in action. The brain's intrinsic adaptability not only fosters the rise of new neurological connections, but also allows individuals to sculpt their thought processes, breaking free from the chains of compulsion and reclaiming the helm of their mental well being. Part 7 The Mind's Power to Ease the Echoes of Lost Limbs. Phantom limb pain is as baffling as it is agonizing a cruel trick played by the mind, creating pain where no physical limb exists. This phenomenon, which haunts many individuals, including soldiers and accident victims, can manifest as a relentless and seemingly inescapable torment. Yet, this peculiar type of pain is not the body's exclusive domain. Some individuals endure various forms of discomfort, such as menstrual cramps without a uterus, or the ache of an ulcer long after it has healed, these visceral echoes beg the question, how can pain persist in the absence of its physical point of origin? Enter the field of neuroplasticity, which offers not just an explanation but a ray of hope. Neuroscientist V. S. Ramachandran theorized that the persistent pain results from the brain's insatiable hunger for input in areas that once coordinated with the now absent limb. Bereft of genuine stimulation, these areas release signals beckoning neighboring neurons to forge new connections with them, inadvertently heightening sensations of pain. Ramachandran's ingenuity led to a remarkable solution, a combat of illusions, wherein he leveraged the brain's very ability to be deceived for therapeutic effect. His creation, 
a simple yet profound apparatus known as the mirror box, sought to dupe the brain into the belief of a restored limb. Here's how it works. The active limb is reflected in a way that the brain interprets as the lost limb moving freely. Through this visual trickery, individuals like Philip Martinez, whose phantom limb pain was so intense that it drove him to the brink of suicide, found relief. After consistently engaging with the mirror box for mere minutes daily, Martinez experienced not just a reduction in pain, but a complete cessation of both his phantom limb and its associated agony. This therapeutic marvel illuminates the brain's elasticity and its susceptibility to our constructed reality. Imagination, carefully directed, can essentially rewrite the brain's pain narratives, providing liberation from the torturous grips of sensations that should, by all logic, not exist. In this lies a profound lesson. The power of the human mind is boundless, able to transcend physical limitations through the sheer force of perception and belief. Part 8. Imagine Stronger How visionary thought can shape reality. The theater of the mind is a grand stage where the boundaries between the real and imagined blur with intriguing possibilities. Harvard Medical School's Alvaro Pascual Leone revealed that our imaginations can wield tangible power over our physical existence. The ability to use visualization not only to enhance our skills, but also to strengthen our muscles is within our grasp. Picture this. Individuals embarking on an endeavor to master the piano, yet their paths to expertise diverge. One group engages physically with the instrument, fingers dancing across keys, while the other group rehearses the same melodies mentally, without touching a single piano key. When the curtains fall and performances are measured, the results are nothing short of extraordinary. The brain mappings and skill levels of the two groups are strikingly similar. How can imagination mirror actual practice so closely? Neuroscientifically speaking, the brain handles imagined actions and real actions in comparable ways. The cascade of neural activation, whether one is visualizing playing a melody or actually performing it, is similar across various brain regions. Likewise, when eliciting the image of the letter A or genuinely viewing it, the primary visual cortex lights up in both scenarios. These insights offer profound implications. Mental rehearsals aren't just rehearsals. They're equivalent to full-blown performances within our neural circuits. But the influence of visualization transcends the cerebral realm and extends to the physical. In an intriguing study by researchers Guang Yue and Kelly Cole, two groups focused on finger strength, one through tangible exercise and the other purely through imagination including mentally amplifying effort with internal chants of harder, harder, harder. The physical exercises saw expected muscular improvements, but remarkably, the visualization group also experienced a significant increase in muscle strength. The essence of these findings lies in the powerful connection between mind and matter, showing us that the realms of our imagination can, indeed, shape our physical world. Whether sculpting our abilities or fortifying our physique, the practice of mental visualization stands as a testament to the extraordinary capabilities we possess. The potential to reimagine and reconstruct our realities from the inside out. Part 9. The Transformative Power of Words Psychotherapy as a Tool for Neural Reconfiguration Psychotherapy's transformative potential may be underestimated, yet it rests on the principles of neuroplasticity that date back to the intellectual musings of Sigmund Freud. Long before the term neuroplasticity entered our lexicon, Freud laid the foundation with the insight that the brain's wiring is influenced by repeated experiences and connections, the precursor to what would later be known as Hebb's rule, neurons that fire together wire together. Freud's psychoanalytic techniques like free association were early explorations into the mind's interconnected web. By letting thoughts flow unchecked in response to prompts, patients unveiled intricate networks of associations, giving Freud and modern therapists 
a map to navigate the psyche's depths. The psychotherapeutic dialogue conveys that our formative years, particularly childhood, wield great influence over our adult capacities for love and connection. It recognizes that while neuroplastic change remains possible throughout life, it tends to require more effort post-childhood, akin to reshaping a more mature tree rather than pruning a young sapling. Memory, another cornerstone of our mental landscape, is also acknowledged as pliable within psychotherapy. Memories can be revisited and reinterpreted, an idea especially relevant for individuals who reinterpret childhood experiences with new cognitive and emotional perspectives as they mature. This understanding of memory's malleability offers a fertile ground for therapeutic intervention, allowing for the healing and reconfiguration of neural networks associated with traumatic experiences. Through guided exploration and reassessment of past events, patients can reshape their perceptions and emotional responses. Consider the case of Mr. L, whose enduring depression was rooted in a deeply held belief that forming intimate relationships was an act of betrayal to his late mother. When he finally came to terms with her passing, the decades-long barrier crumbled and he could form a meaningful bond with another woman. As Mr. L's story illustrates, psychotherapy's essence lies in leveraging the brain's inherent plasticity to foster personal growth and emotional healing. It proves that understanding the origins of one's behavior and thought patterns can catalyze a profound internal restructuring. This therapeutic process, unfolding through the spoken word, encapsulates the delicate dance between brain adaptation and the power of human insight, affirming that the capacity to change endures across the span of a lifetime. Part 10. Eternal Youth for Your Brain the promise of neuronal stem cells. There was a time when we navigated the world with a map that depicted the brain as an organ in inexorable decline, unable to renew itself like the skin or liver. But the discovery of neuronal stem cells has redrawn the contours of that map, offering a vision of a brain that defies the conventional sands of time. These exceptional cells are the fountain of youth within our cranium, not yet committed to becoming neurons or glia, the brain's supportive infrastructure, their superpower. They can replicate indefinitely, a process we call neurogenesis, which continues throughout our lifespan. Neuronal stem cells have been found not only actively participating in the dynamics of areas like the hippocampus, which holds the reins of our memory, and the olfactory bulb, the center of our sense of smell, but they also lie dormant in places tied to emotion, movement, and even in the spinal cord. However, the presence of neuronal stem cells is merely one chapter in the story of brain regeneration. We can enrich our hippocampus, the memory haven, by seeking novelty and embracing the unfamiliar. The learning process that accompanies new experiences triggers the birth of neurons. Physical exercise, too, stretches the lifetime of our neurons beyond their natural expiration. By getting our hearts pumping, we're not only ushering in fresh neurons, but also ensuring a steady supply of life-giving oxygen to our cerebral realm. What's more, these stimulating adventures of the body and mind serve as a bulwark against the encroachments of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Yet, in this defense, not all activities hold equal stature. Those that command our focus and involve learning, such as mastering a musical instrument, immersing in literature, or navigating the intricate steps of dance, are the most potent allies in securing our cognitive fortifications for the future. Hence, the emergence of neuronal stem cells and the cultivation of brain-enhancing habits cast a light on a hopeful path, one where the brain's aging can be met with regenerative defiance fostering a cerebral landscape that retains the vibrancy and vigor of youth, even as the years advance. Part 11. The Brain's Balancing Act. The Wonders of Mirror Region Takeover. Within the realm of the brain's plasticity lies a form of adaptability that might seem like something out of a science fiction novel, the Mirror Region Takeover. In this extraordinary phenomenon, when one half of the brain encounters an impairment, its symmetrical counterpart across the cerebral divide will seek to compensate, potentially assuming the disabled region's duties. Consider the remarkable case of Michelle Mack, 
who defies conventional neurology by thriving with just one brain hemisphere. Where one might expect to find her left hemisphere, there is merely empty space. Yet, Mac navigates life with a degree of normalcy, belying the extraordinary circumstances of her brain's anatomy. Her struggles with abstract concepts, such as idiomatic expressions, contrast with an impressive aptitude for memorizing dates, a skill that traditionally depends on intact left hemispheric functions like language processing. Mac's existence refutes long-held beliefs about strict hemispheric specializations. Instead, it illustrates the brain's capacity for roles to be transferred and molded in response to necessity, a testament to the brain's inherent versatility. This mirroring capability isn't limited to extraordinary cases like Max. It is part of our developmental narrative. During our early years, both brain hemispheres exhibit a remarkable likeness, housing potential for a vast spectrum of cognitive tasks. It is only as we grow that they begin to specialize in functions such as language and spatial awareness. Childhood brain scans unravel this tale. Infants processing novel sounds use both hemispheres extensively. It isn't until around the age of two that the left hemisphere comes into its own as the linguistic maestro, with the right hemisphere developing other specialized talents. Hence, mirror region takeover is not only a backup mechanism but a relic of the brain's early state of limitless potential. Even in the adult brain, this remarkable plasticity provides assurances that our cognitive functions can be preserved, even when parts of their neural residence are no longer habitable. This capacity for balance and reorganization assures us that the brain is a marvel of adaptability, continually rewriting its own capabilities to navigate life's complexities. Final Summary The voyage through the landscapes of our minds reveals one profound truth. The brain's ability to transform is immense. This malleable organ, which orchestrates every aspect of our being, from the beat of our hearts to the dreams we dare to imagine, is an agent of continuous change, always ready to adapt and evolve. The concept of neuroplasticity, a mainstay of this enlightening narrative, affirms our capacity to sprout new neurons and rejuvenate existing ones. It's not just the physical recovery from injuries that neuroplasticity promises. It also equips us with the power to surmount psychological barriers and recalibrate mental processes. By steering our thoughts, engaging in stimulating activities, and nurturing our cognitive selves, we can redefine the bounds of our mental capabilities, whether shaping memories, overcoming cognitive impairments, or even rewiring functions from one brain region to another. The key to unlocking these possibilities is embedded in neuroplasticity. In essence, the story told here is one of hope, empowerment, and boundless potential. With a newfound comprehension of our brain's plastic nature, we can embark on a path to recovery, self-improvement, and ultimately, a higher quality of life. Embracing the dynamic nature of our brains can lead not only to personal transformation, but also to advances that harness the full spectrum of human competency and resilience. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.